And we're live, I think. They should be able to hear us, Zias. So if any of you kind, foolish people that are here watching, listening to us, can't see or hear us, let us know. Uh, but everything should be should be up and running now as best we can so that we can play some Alien. Oh, thanks, Chuck. All right. Chuck is supposed to be here. Uh, I uh, I went ahead and put him in the bottom right corner, uh, like he's in trouble because he's not. But he'll be here in a couple weeks. Uh, it'll all be fine. Um, I told I him that miss you. as punishment, I'm just going to kill the character that he just built over the past week, and he has to build Wonderful. another one now. I think that's only fair. So, but yeah, he's our sixth, uh, but he's not going to be here tonight because uh, he's got he's got big shotting stuff to do. Uh, so we are starting an alien game. <laughs> We're starting alien. Uh, it's not going to be a cinematic. So if you've been watching any of like the stuff that Matt's been doing over on uh, over on the Freely Channel, Freely Publishing, and they've been playing a lot of Destroy of Worlds, we're not doing that. We're actually going to start doing like campaign stuff. So there's like all this other way of playing Alien that uh, that uses different things. It's not as lethal uh, in the short term, but in the long term it will be. So characters won't necessarily be dying and going incredibly stressed out like every single session, but like it'll be more of a long term attrition. And so, and then we'll have like really heights of, of sort of serious, dangerous moments. So uh, we will be exploring the alien universe and the frontier and all that kind of such as they fly around in a ship. Um, most folks have already made, uh, have made their characters, uh, but there's still some fine tuning that we have to do. And so we're going to treat the first, you know, 15 to 30 minutes here just to, uh, just to kind of get things, get things settled, make sure everyone's connected. And then we're actually going to dive in and start playing uh doing like a little like prologue so to speak for for the campaign so um thanks for the subvert frenchy do it's <laughs> a good idea i like it oh uh, hey there's uh there's there's old jeff so now we have old jeff not old jeff oh thanks thanks bert thanks for the sub full compliment of jeff's okay well yeah we start we have to start getting more friendly with uh the jeff from tt2kb and figure out what he is because he looks young uh Gur than me in old Jeff. So he could be young Jeff, I could be middle Jeff, and then Janov can be old Jeff and something like that. Uh all right. So before we dive into like uh everything, why don't we just do plugs? Uh, if you have anything you want to plug, go ahead and do it. Uh you can say who you're playing uh briefly, but we'll probably dive into it in greater depth as we play. So don't feel like you have to like tell us every little thing. Just say like who you are and like what career you took, that kind of thing. Uh, so, Jeremy, uh, you're up, according to the, the layout. Oh, my. Okay. Uh, well, I play games with these fine people all through the week. Uh, me and Matt down there and another buddy do a Pludcast, P-L-E-W-D, where you can listen to us talk about nerdy uh, comic book stuff. And uh, I will be playing Marshall Law, who is a licensed Android warden, basically uh, an Android marshal. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have some. I have a question or two that I'm going to ask you uh, shortly about that. So Good. we're, we're going to get to kind of fill out some of the details and the history of like that. So it's really exciting because uh, like there's all sorts of rules and requirements and restrictions uh, for Androids, and we're just going to say, "Ah, screw it. We're going to break all of them and kind of make our own fun little fun with it." Uh, Adam. Yes, Jeff. Uh, who are you, and who are you playing? Uh, my name is Adam Rose. I'm with uh, Grumman Perilous, and I am playing Big Eugene Frosty Ellsworth. And Good uh, he's a he's a roughneck, and he just likes messing around with parts. And every now and then, the parts they talk to him, and he talks to the parts. You know, sometimes he throws a few tools. Okay, but everything will end up all right in the end. Okay, so he talks to his tools. I like that. Uh, well, I mean, don't you? I mean, I definitely yell at my computer enough, uh, so I <laughs> yeah. guess that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think all of us can feel that tonight. People yelling at the computer. What? what are you talking about? What? Are you doing? Like, <laughs> never, <it's>... never. <laughs> no. Um. So something I'd like to plug is a little project we're working on called Divinity Unleashed, and um, it will be. Uh, a way to start off in Zweihander with um, a, a basic profession that is specialized already. So uh, in Zweihander, you can't go into special schools like pyromancy or astromancy until you reach your intermediate tier. 
And this supplement will uh, have you be able to start off um, in every single tier for the divine magic. Um, so it's a, uh, there's a free uh, preview of what it is, particularly if you like the Demiurge, that one's all about the Demiurge. So that's what I'd like to plug. Uh, very cool. Yeah. And cool. you got the link in chat. Perfect. Uh, all right, Melissa, uh, who are you and who are you playing? Uh, so I am Melissa with Adventures in Lollygagging. Um, we play a couple different Zweihander games. Uh, we have a podcast release every Monday of our A Call to Ruin campaign. Uh, we just hit episode 63 uh, for that one. Uh, every Thursday, you can catch us on twitch.tv slash ZweihanderRPG, um, where we get some short run campaigns going over there. Um, and then on Mondays, we usually play either Besson or now Alien on Mondays. Um, we have a couple other games that we play sporadically as well. Uh, so in this, I am going to be playing Ada Clover. She is a scientist, specifically a botanist with interests in genetics. Um, and she is sort of the scatterbrained, um, always kind of doing something, never quite in a conversation with you because she's thinking about 20 other things. That's Perfect. Ada. Perfect. Uh, Jen. Hey, everybody. It is Jen. I'm part of the Grimmer Perilous, Perilous Studios. Um, I'm a freelance editor and proofer. It just got announced today. We're doing Flames of Freedom. I will be proofing that. So that's the project I'm going to start working on over the next month or two. Um, I stream on Pixel Prowler, and we also play with the GMP crew and other people. But our Saturday game of Alien, which is Act 2, will be... Uh, continuing and tonight i am playing veronica mars bar wesson she's a doctor a medic i just now got the veronica mars thing like now that we said <laughs> the whole thing together i just finally picked up, picked up on i did not even see that before i was gonna uh, like she'll be like veronica the Mo the rock and i was like nah no nah, that's too rocky okay uh and then uh, matt yeah, yeah. We're playing this Saturday, aren't we, by the way? Oh, Heck yeah, we are. It's the 26th. Yeah. Did you forget? All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so much alien. I know, I know. All right. Uh, you can find me on twitch.tv slash ZweihanderRPG on Wednesday night. I'll be running the in-between at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. On Thursday, I'm over on twitch.tv slash Publishing, where I'm running Alien Destroyer of Worlds. And apparently you can also find me on twitch.tv slash Grim and Perilous Plays, where I'm, again, running Alien Destroyer of Worlds on Saturday at, I don't know, 8.30 Central Standard Time. And Plutecast with Jeremy and Ken. Listen to us talk about comic books. Uh, yeah, that's what I've got going on. And I'm playing Captain Bud McCall. I'm the officer of this ship, of this, this ragtag crew. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to yeah, talk about that, yeah. too. Yeah, you got the hat on and everything. It's great. I do. It's perfect. Uh, all right. And uh, Chuck's not here, so I'll just mention it. Uh, Dan dies in the end. Uh, zine that we've uh, worked on for a little bit. Uh, I did some work on it as well. Uh, Jeremy's in there as well. Uh, you can go check it out. Just drop the link in the chat. It's very. It's 50 cents, I think. I don't know. It could be more than that now. But it's cheap. Go get it. It's great. It's got all sorts of RPG content. Uh, if you don't buy it, I'm going to kill Chuck's character. So it's really basically, oh, like, that's how it's going to work. Uh, so this is, this is the first time I can say it out loud. It's the best 50 cents I've ever spent. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Wow. Uh, there was a, there was a soda, uh, a surge I got in like 1992 for 50 cents. That's my number one, but like, this is definitely mm. a close second, uh, because I really enjoyed surge when I was like I 12. I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, if I drank it now, I'd probably have a heart attack, but you know, whatever. Um, let's get started. So you've got, we've got your characters, we got your general care. You guys, you got your stats and stuff in, you figured out your careers, all that stuff's there, talents, etc. So we don't have to kind of worry about kind of going through that. All of you got your inventories. Um, uh, what I, what I want to focus on, I have a couple questions for you all before we get started. And uh, this is sort of group. Uh, so chime in, etc. Chuck's here. So he's got, uh, he's in the chat so he could chime in for a few minutes before he, uh, if he wants, before he hops over, uh, and does, uh, does his uh, interview on TT2KB. Uh, so the first things first, what's, well, you all have a ship. Uh, your ship, uh, is a, is a star clipper. Uh, it's a, it's a commercial transport ship. Uh, it's a type of ship that can, uh, that can go, well, it could it could do sh it could do small cargo runs, and it can do a lot of commercial transport. 
Uh, and so you're going to be doing things, uh, it, while it's not as, it's not necessarily a tow ship, uh, it's definitely going to do a lot of, a lot of running. So you're going to be going across the, the, the frontier here and there. So it needs a name and, uh, I would like you all to go ahead and name it. So we've, we've got the Nostromo. We know that. I thought we settled on the hot pocket. Did we settle Not on the, the hot... hot pocket? I wasn't sure if everyone was on board with the hot pocket, <laughs> so I didn't want to lock that in until. I don't want to talk about started. hot pockets the whole time. Oh that's that's fair. Uh, sausage, that's fair. Chuck's also know. going for hot pocket. Yeah, this is like a, no. it's a holdover yeah. from Star Wars. Yeah. I'm. Oh no. I'm all for the hot pocket. Okay. I mean, got at least two no's. Oh so. no. <laughs> I feel like if there's if I feel like if there's two no's, we probably should pick something else. I, would, I don't want people to be in. I, I have no problem with it because I was on board the Hot Pocket in the Star Wars game with my, my drug addict doctor. So w what other options could we throw out there? And chat, feel free to chime in on what this could be. <laughs> Chuck says the, the cow. <laughs> yeah. The Hot the Papadio. The Hot okay. Purse. Okay. Oh, my goodness. The Testino's Pizza Flaming Tacos. Why don't we just go all the, the way? The, the bagel warm bite. purse. The big bite. <laughs> oh, my uh so we need we need a name uh i'm not gonna worry about i'm not gonna worry about like call signs such or whatever like that's not important right now but like the i see i said the bagel bite but i don't think people like the bagel bite this could also just be the what we could oh. say is that you have an official name for the ship like the nostromo and then like the nickname is like the hot pocket and maybe that's a source <laughs> of contention between certain mm. people on the ship they don't really like how it's like we stop calling it the hot pocket for crying out loud, and like because Chuck's gonna be the pilot and he's flying it around, and so he's always in the hot pocket. So okay, so we will we we, we need a real name. Do we want spacey type names? Like <laughs> that's up to you all. Equinox or oh, uh, there there could be a number de designation like H zero one dash something that kind of looks like pocket. Okay, I like. Oh that. my god. Uh... <laughs> Oh the, my God! The H, the H O one. I don't think I don't think we're getting away from Hot Pocket, Jen. Oh my God! Oh God! Spectrum Eternal, you know <laughs> Eternal, because they're never going to die. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we could we could call it the H O one. The, the Eternal and, Hot Pocket. Oh Lord. Okay. And uh, you know. <laughs> Wait, it's me. <laughs> Jen's got the hot box. <laughs> Uh, is that Latin for hot pocket or something, Chuck? Is that what that is? The col the colidi sinum. I don't know. I feel like he's he's sneaking in a hot pocket reference somehow. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I thought. Okay. Is it? I think so. <laughs> I'm up for I'm up for that. Yeah. Okay. So I would be the, up for the colidi sinum. The sinum. Colidi sinum. Colidi sinum. Okay. Yeah. There's All a right. variation of Hot Pocket for you. That'll be, and like, and, and again, that'll be like the inside joke. You gotta really. All right, so that's the name of the show. Hey, oh my God, the inside joke. That'll. I don't know. <laughs> okay, it's the Hot I guess it's it's a Hot Pocket, but in Latin. Uh, okay, so then that's question one. Uh, next question Who owns the lease on the Kalidi Sinem? And so I'm giving you three options. And they're, you probably recognize their names. One of them is, is the one that everyone knows when it comes to corporations in the alien universe, Wayland yutani obviously. But there's two other fairly big corporations that come up from time to time, especially in the book itself. One of them is LaSalle, is LaSalle Bionational, which is like the like the one of the bigger uh, competitors in the kind of the bioweapons industry uh, to Wayland, um, more kind of like French origin. Uh, and then there's like Seeks and, Seeks and Biotech. Uh, if you've ever played... Uh, if you ever played Alien, Alien Isolation, uh, Seekson kind of played a little bit role with some of that. Um, so one of those three big corporations owns the owns the papers on your uh, on your ship and will come calling from time to time. And depending on mm -hmm. who you pick, that's going to this is a this is one of those starting character major choice. If we replayed the campaign and you picked a different corporation, radically change what the encounters might be. So. What are we thinking? It's alien. We gotta go wheel and you, Tony. Okay. It's hard not to. Yeah, it is. I thought about not even asking that question, but I wanted to ask anyway. Well, it was nice of you to ask. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> you know. All right. So Wayland Wayland Utani. That's fine. That's fine. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, and then now we can get into simpler stuff. 
Uh, now we get into your character. So I've got Khalidi Sinem, uh, <laughs> owned by the Whalen Yutani Corporation. Um, and now I need to know how long have you all been working together? How long is how about this, this crew specifically? This not, crew. Like, mm. not pieces of like yeah. I've been working with martial law. For you can have your years, own the others, individual uh, relationships and go back however, but how long? <laughs> I'm gonna say that you're the the job that you're on, you've probably been on for at least three weeks because we're starting in the middle of something. Uh so we probably wanted a little bit longer than that. Uh I don't know. It's up to you. If you want this to be your first job where the crew's together, we could do that. Or we can say you've been together a little bit longer. Either that's fine. Thoughts? Uh, I'm for trying out a little bit more history. Because okay. uh, yeah. the, the other Alien game I've played, it, we were still all relatively new. Okay. Yeah. Because th that's what Destroyer is. It's just everyone's thrown together an all-star group of lunatics yeah. marines yeah yeah longer like four weeks like <laughs> yeah she's just gonna keep counting five weeks. i mean even if yeah. we've only done like three jobs that could still easily be a long period of time yes. right because yes. you're in cryo sleep for yes. most of the mm -hmm. job most of the job like you i are. said you're paid to sleep this, yeah. this is what we do this is our life yeah you get there's a lot of contracts uh are built around like wake hours like how many hours are you awake to do the job and you're mm -hmm. paid incredibly incredibly well for that usually like they're pretty good pretty good gigs uh so a long time. So we'll say, I don't know, maybe, maybe like a year or two, something like that. Sound okay? Yeah, let's yeah, do a that year. That sounds good. Okay. All right. And then the next question is, this is where we got to dive into your character sheets. So buddies and rivals. Um, these can change, so nothing's permanent. So anything that you establish now could always change as like the game progresses. Like someone could do something to piss your character off, and then now you're not rivals anymore. Or someone could like buy you a hot pocket, and they can, you're suddenly your best friends now. So, uh, but we need buddies and rivals. It's pretty much part of every uh, every one of these these freely games is to have something like this. So, who's your buddy, and who's your rivals? We've got a we've got an android who is a lawman. We've got Biggie, who is a, a roughneck who talks to talks to his tools. We've got a doctor who's a little spacey. Uh, we've got Veronica Mars, the medical doctor, uh, and then we've got Bud McCall, the uh, the captain, and then we've got some some jackass pilot. So, <laughs> <laughs> friends and rivals. So talk amongst yourselves. Doesn't the the pilot? Isn't Frenchie reckless? I think uh, he is. I mean, Chuck's playing him, so whether <laughs> the intention was to be or not, it's going to well, be. Yeah. I think he actually had like a talent called reckless. Uh, I can pull it up. Yeah. So, no, that's just nonsense. The android does not yeah. appreciate the reckless pilot. Okay. That's he just irresponsible. Yeah. Okay. So, do you want to? Is that? Is that? Are you saying that 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 he's your rival? I, I think. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't think the android would care for okay. that. So go ahead and punch Frenchie in for that. Um, right. Chuck, you're It's here. mostly because I hate Chuck, but, you know. <laughs> I mean, we all do right now. I know. I'm, I'm all about getting the job done, getting it done safely and quickly. And I think uh, I might see to eye to eye then with our, our um, security officer here as a buddy. Okay. I'm level-headed yeah. like he is. So okay. So we, we see eye to eye, even though he's a synthetic all right all right uh yeah what about our doctors and what about our roughneck what are we thinking uh my buddy is frenchy okay <laughs> i mean when it comes to friendship frenchy's freaking awesome okay makes sense so <laughs> who who would draw the ire then of uh a big e, e well i ain't got a problem with most people so i don't know like if you can't turn a wrench on them and you can't turn an ear on them what are you going to do with them hmm. so and question for you so as a mechanic are you kind of the 
every tool in its place, put it back where you found it kind of person. Because uh, my character might drive you batshit crazy because she's super disorganized and messy. Well, you know, like, if you're on some sort of a terrestrial sort of situation, then you may not need to. But, uh, you know, out here in space, uh, you, you ain't secure something, that ain't right. Because, uh, you know, you, you lose that gravity, um, to fly everywhere, you're just asking to get killed. So, yeah, that could be an option because uh, Clover is definitely uh, scatterbrained and leaves stuff everywhere. So yeah, but you got constantly... near it. You got an ear I can turn. It ain't nothing but sensors in the head of that marshal. I mean, like I said, if you can't turn if you can't turn a bolt and you can't turn an ear, then what good is Whoa. it? Whoa. Excuse me. <laughs> Look, I know you talk to your tools, but you don't hey. need to talk to me that way, buddy. Well, you ain't a tool. <laughs> Dial it down. I mean, listen, I, I don't understand it. I'm not that smart. I know what I am. And you can just, you know, let someone who knows them calm, techie stuff be all good with you, okay? But Yeah, you, like you and me. I, I know science. Well, we ain't got a problem per se. It's just I don't know what to do with you. you you're in a, a, an enigma. Okay. A, an enigma. <laughs> a, <laughs> Oh, God, sorry. Those big words. <laughs> Four biggies. <laughs> More than two syllables. It's okay. Don't hurt yourself. Uh, okay. I ain't hurt All myself right. in a long time. Like, it's been two weeks. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Okay. I'll do my best to frustrate you. <laughs> this is good. good. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. So, <laughs> to a good start. <laughs> So Jeremy did say he's going to do the walk invoice for his character. Like he That's promised amazing. that. So <laughs> well, I figured I, I, the, I, I figured the law version of these Android malls, they have really terrible personality and just they're kind of, they're, the programming is tweaked mm. a little wrong. So maybe they pause in funny places. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Melissa or Jen have an idea of buddy or rival? Uh, rival will be Marshall. Okay. Oh man, everyone hates Marshall. Awesome. Oh. That's okay. okay. I mean, why wouldn't you hate it? Okay. All right. There's a good reason for it. Okay. All right. Okay. I that respect it. Uh, buddy. Uh. <laughs> I guess doctors stick together. Okay. Doctors without borders. <laughs> doctors without boundaries, boundaries. <laughs> okay. that sounds bad we're in a hot yeah. pocket oh my god oh doctors get it done we're in the Khalidi sinum Khalidi sinum the sinum the sinum it's a synonym Sinum. yep yeah but <laughs> i never took that uh okay uh all right so buddy okay all right so what about uh, a different show? Yeah. What about uh, Clover? Do you have a rival? So the rival doesn't necessarily have to be mutual, right? Like you can consider no. someone else a rival who doesn't necessarily consider you a rival. Sure. Yeah. And understand, like I think rival is, and and I think in the in the in the cinematic everything is distilled down, and so we're very extreme. But I think in campaign play, like rival could just be just like the kind of the person that just sort of like grates your gears gets a little nerves, bit. yeah it just kind of gets on your nerves every now and then doesn't mean you can't work with them and hang around them it just means like well yeah i don't want to hang out with you tonight that's fine <laughs> yeah i just don't understand it yeah <laughs> um see you later chuck um think about like if like, one of the ways i pitched this when we were we were talking about doing the campaign thing was the idea of like crossing over the concept of like firefly as like frontier independent freelance type people but also within the like the horror of the 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 alien universe right so think of how jane is on that ship right and how he can be really grating and annoying and you would say that he's probably a rival of some people but at the same time like when yeah. all said and done like when when push comes to shove you you all probably are going to work together anyway so it's just a question of who sort of who who kind of annoys you a little bit that's not to be a mortal enemy yeah, I'm probably going to say that uh, Frosty is going to annoy me. 
makes oh, a lot wow. of sense. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I like it. Okay, good. That's very and this can change as we go. Like things can happen. Everything can change. Somebody else can Yeah, I think that's good too. It's good it. if it changes. It shows character development. So that's awesome. Uh okay. So we've got our buddies and rivals. because uh, Chuck was doing Frenchie was 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 friends with uh was Biggie and was rivals with the Marshalls. So I think they're kind of all on the same the two of them are on the same page. They're thick and thin. Uh okay, so the next question is agendas. Uh, in the cinematic game, you get you get them. They're dictated by the, cin- the, the cinematic, and they escalate over the course. Uh, in the campaign game, it's self-directed, uh, so you can kind of figure out what your agendas are. Um, it's okay if you don't have, like, a really specific one in mind, uh, so you can just sort of, like, broadly think of, like, what that agenda might be. It doesn't have to necessarily be nefarious. Um, at some point in the campaign, I might come to you and make it nefarious but uh but like for now like it's uh yeah it's just sort of like what what's a goal think about it in those terms like what's a goal or um like a belief system or something like that that your character has like one of those things something t- like a goal would be something tangible belief system is maybe more abstract but like a way of the way you live or something like that mm. and that would be agenda anyone want to take a crack at that i know a few people had them uh, I do. What's yours, Adam? Well, you know, see, I once gave up uh, uh, my family and all that for uh, for the job, and I just, you know, I don't think I could do that again. Like uh, that ain't right. So uh, I won't let my friends down ever, because uh, they're my new family now. Okay, except for Marshall, because he's creepy. Well, I mean. <laughs> How can you be family if you ain't got no blood? I mean, blood is thicker than water, but, uh, you know, like, what the heck is milk? That's true. (laughs) She's surprisingly (laughs) thick, actually. (laughs) I've said this to Matt before, but every time I see, like, an Android blade, it always makes me think of, like, white sauce, like pasta white sauce. When I was a kid, I just couldn't eat white sauce because it was so gross watching Bishop get torn up in Aliens. Uh, Okay. So that's one. Uh, other agendas. What are we thinking? Goals, beliefs, something like that. I got mine. What you got? Matt? Uh, get the job done, done well, and ensure everybody gets their fair share due to them. Yeah, perfect. See, like that's more like that's more of like belief system, just like like Adams, like the idea of like what drives you, like what's uh, in a way perfect. Uh, what else? Chuck doesn't have one, unfortunately, so I can't read it off. And he already left, so we'll mm-hmm. figure his out for next next time. I guess mine would be to be the perfect doctor, the best doctor I can be. Okay. Oh yeah, that can that can go wrong. Oh. Sure. <laughs> I like that. Okay. Uh, I would say that um, Clover's is probably about creation because um, she's a botanist and kind of geneticist so you know kind of trying to find that perfect like new Mm -hmm. new species and especially kind of in the kind of food and that type of thing so Mm -hmm. trying to like you know almost like an inventor like wanting to have that kind of signature thing that's yours um so that's what she's kind of always looking for perfect easily manipulable i like that excellent okay Um, you're welcome uh jeremy what you thinking for marshall I mean, the the straightforward thing is basically is just keeping crew and cargo safe. But he is also an investigator, so probably some of it is kind of trying to detect problems before they occur. Okay. Balance prevention, being better than a pound of solution, and all that. Mm-hmm. I mean, if the other thing is, it's sort of interesting. We've 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 chatted a little, little bit about your character um, and how maybe like this was an attempt at one point to have like frontier mm-hmm. justice be handled by, by androids and such, uh, has not gone particularly well. And, but you've, and you've maybe been sort not. of been repurposed in some way. Um, and so like, maybe I, I can do it. Like I, it's not my fault mm-hmm. that, uh, there were issues. Yeah. It was a different, I, I, I can handle it. Like just because I grant you this other models that have had issues. It's not me. I'm fine. Look, my crew is fine. The cargo is fine. I haven't shot anybody in weeks. <laughs> Sorry, now, see, I like that. that was an accident. We, <laughs> like I said, I haven't had an accident in a few weeks. <laughs> right. We were comparing blood to milk, testing thickness, viscosity, if you will. Yeah, viciousness. 
<laughs> you say tomato, I say tomato. God, I love it. Yep. <laughs> oh, thank, thanks, Ashley, for the bits. Oh, um, thank you. Okay. I love it. So that's Yeah, Libiv is kind of proving that he's viable. Yeah, yeah. That is probably a nice way to put it. I like it. Perfect. Well, go ahead. No, go ahead, Adam. What you got? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna sit here and derail this conversation forever. Let's move on. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, two more questions, and these are these are a little bit more specific. So we all know that Bud McCall is like the captain, so to speak. He's the officer, technically. That's the career he has, and so he's he's the one whose name is actually probably on the pink slip, the lease. He is really the one that's attached to the massive, massive amount of money that this ship costs. Uh, the rest of you are, are maybe more like just hired hands or friends or whatever it might be. So he's kind of the in-charge guy. Who who do we say, if, if Bud's not around to make a decision, who is the next in line? Do I get to say this too? Absolutely. This is a group discussion. I'm going to say my pilot, Frenchie. Okay. Mm. Oh God, Chuck! Oh jeez, <laughs> Chuck's my second in command. Chuck is, num- e- Chuck even is number even above one. the marshal. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh God! This Come on, chat, explode. back me up on this. Oh my goodness, Ooh. Frenchie's my second in command. Okay, um, buddy, I I love you. Allegedly, I don't know that I can really <laughs> feel love. I say that to comfort you, but I question your decision. He's a horrible man and a terrible choice respectfully he's a longtime friend uh-huh so i i gotta go with him even though okay. i respect you you keep you keep us safe marshall i gotta go with frenchy okay so this is I'm a right that go ahead adam i'm all right with that okay as long as it ain't me we're good okay <laughs> right as long as it's not me either <laughs> okay so really so i let so would would veronica have any interest in in taking a kind of a leadership role jen do you think over frenchy no okay all right so then i think above the... marshall yes that's fair that's fair. No. <laughs> wow that's fair. everybody's just hating on marshall he's an android okay. that makes sense makes sense um, uh hey I, I feel your pain jeremy listen uh, the <laughs> older models had trouble he's okay Can't feel marshall's on pain, the level. artificial person <laughs> marshall's on the level mm-hmm. uh I mean, you okay. talk about old models i am old school some okay. stigma with it i understand sure and while we're on the subject of marshall this is the last question and then we can start doing a little intro prologue here um so during hypersleep uh these mm-hmm. like as we already talked about there's these long intervals where if you're human you're asleep uh there are most of the time what happens is when any sort of complex decision has to be made or when arrival at your destination, that's when we start popping people out of, out of hypersleep. But in the interim, there are weeks and weeks that go by uh, where there's no one human that's awake on the ship. And in that time, the ship actually needs maintenance. There's mechanics in game to address this every week uh, that a, uh, every week of, of flight, uh, there has to be maintenance done, and so there's got to be heavy mach- one heavy machinery and one comtech role per week to keep mm. the ship up to date. Uh, with your ship, because you all do have uh, an advanced AI, you do have a middling early model of of mother. Uh, they can handle the comtech role, but cannot handle the heavy uh, the heavy machinery role. Now, mm-hmm. one of the reasons I would imagine that Marshall is on this ship, and is because it's commonly falls to a Android to take care of that maintenance because they don't go into cryo sleep or hyper sleep. Uh, so I would like to know what does Marshall do during those long intervals of time between when the crew is, is while the crew is down, like what are you doing to pass the time Marshall all by yourself uh, while, uh, um, while this is going on? Marshall is actually pretty exceptionally skilled at comtech so he definitely tries to keep everything top notch on that uh the heavy machinery not really skilled at that but comtech he's on top of um there's a possibility that he's like a little overzealous on like continuously like run like walking loops kind of like maintaining some sort of 
routine around the ship, investigating okay. things, making sure that there hasn't been a breach or some other nonsense. Okay. And probably as best as possible, kind of like a regulated thing of like, okay, it has been two days since my last, you know, jaunt around the ship. Okay. Is there Go any... around and on X days, investigate these rooms, Y days, investigate these rooms. Are there any, any idiosyncrasies that you perhaps exhibit during this? Like things that you do, uh, mess around with a knife trick, card tricks, something like that? Is there any, is the, do you, do you read, uh, Garden actually says, is there um, anything else that Marshall would so, do when that's not necessary? So I will say, uh, some of this is just because I enjoy it. I love the image of like a space cowboy. And so Marshall's weapons are like an old school revolver and an old school shotgun. I like to think he actually practices doing the quick draw and then the little twirl of the gun and put it back into the holster thing. Okay. So you have this android walking around the ship, like practicing like stupid cowboy quick draw nonsense. Okay, perfect. Um, and what's the... It's not weird at all. That's Nobody's not weird at all. Nervous. It's, I mean, <laughs> I think an android having a weapon on its own uh, probably makes everyone nervous <laughs> other than Captain McCall. Uh, okay. And so would it be fair to say that the last thing that we that you probably remember doing is maybe stopping uh, by a, a very polished panel or a mirror in the bathroom as you're doing your rounds and you're just flipping the gun and looking at yourself while you do so? That sounds delightful. Okay. Yes. I love it. So are we ready to play a little bit? I want to play a little bit. Throat singing. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. Please, an alien. Let's play it. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> yes. So. I wish I could do throat singing. All right. So bear with me with this because this is going to get kind of strange. Uh, we're going to start kind of, kind of cinematically a little bit. Let me get a little music going, it's just so I could so Matt can get YouTube to yell at him about. Actually, this is our channel. Never mind. This is this is let me get my tabletop audio going. Here we go. Uh, if you're in chat, let us know if the if the sound that's coming up is going to start like kind of drowning out people's voices or anything like that. And I can adjust the volume. But tabletop audio is pretty great because one of the tracks literally is Nostromo. And so you just play the Nostromo track and it's just awesome. OK. So. Imagine really briefly. Like, like imagine this like the start of an alien movie okay we see empty space distant stars here and there twinkle and then we see this slow lumbering old old model star clipper just chugging along in the long gaps between systems and we see coming up on the little screen the mission text the classic mission text that we've seen in like the first alien it says Commercial transport ship, Kaliti Sinem. Crew, six. Cargo, 200 frontier colonists. Replacement terraforming parts. Course, Rimward, Rimward to NN3346. And so as that kind of shows up and you see the, the ship begin to pay, like kind of hand past and out of the view uh, we're gonna go ahead and start like drifting inside we're gonna like follow the camera as it comes in maybe a, a port viewing window and as we're zooming through we're seeing like the flickering of lights here and there these overhead not halogen lights or LED lights they're just kind of flickering here and there it's an older model ship it's very quiet very empty there's this just general hum to the engine. And then as we zoom in a little bit further, we come up and we're on like this screen that just says crew cryo. We move on in and we can see that there's these three different honeycomb alcoves, each uh, with two uh, cryo beds inside of them. Uh, the camera zooms over top and we can see as it's kind of panning up over one of these beds, this old model cryo cryo chamber. You can see all sorts of strange stains and such from the different gases and liquids that have to be mixed in order to get people to fall asleep. You can see wires that have been spliced and re-spliced. You can periodically hear a little bleep somewhere of a life monitoring system. And we can see etched into the side of it, there is the name Bud McCall. 
camera comes over top and we see laying in this in this chamber the sleeping face of our captain uh what does that face look like matt i don't know like an angel like an <laughs> angel <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Is he just, bearded, clean shaven? Yes, bearded, um, kind of long, kind of shaggy, scraggly hair over his ears a little bit, a little long in the back. It's been a while since he's been off world. He spends most of his time on the ship. So when they do get downtime in between, he's usually sticks with it and he doesn't wander far. Okay. So as as we're kind of looking at him, like, like again, just this picture, we're zooming down into this pod. The light flickers and everything just goes dark. Every you know, just completely and utterly dark. And then we have a little message again show up again. This is like a movie opening. It pops up, and it says, "While in hypersleep, people are encouraged to dream." And then we flick flicker back. What is Bud McCall dreaming about right now? Matt? You're the captain. So that's why we started with you. Everyone get ready because you're going to get asked the exact same question. Yeah, yeah, Except yeah. for you, Marshall, something else special planned for you. Because androids <laughs> only dream of one thing. Electric he, sheep. He's dreaming of retirement. One day being able to settle down somewhere, have a nice little nest of money put aside. Not a lot. Something modest. Um, he, w- he was a col- colony kid growing up. He was orphaned, so he hasn't really had a home. He's kind of been all over space uh, throughout his life. So he's dreaming about that, his own little paradise that he can retire to. Okay. And so as we're, like, staring at him, there's, like, a flicker of the light again, and it goes black. When it comes back, we can see that Bud McCall is suddenly just screaming in utter pain as the gas inside of the pod has ignited and it's just fire all on the inside. His eyes are still somehow closed, but he's just screaming and screaming. We hear a bleep on the light, on the, like the monitor of the life of the life monitor next to it. We're gonna click down to black again. Camera's gonna zoom over, and we pull up the side of another of another cryopod, and it's gonna say this long name eugene something or other but all that's crossed out and all we see is written or painted in very crude kind of reddish paint big ee what is what is what is it we see when we look into the pod for for biggie adam like what is what does he look like what's like one thing facial expression anything uh he doesn't really have a uh a facial expression at the moment um but What's what's kind of odd about Big E is that his appearance isn't necessarily um, indicative of what he sounds and acts like. Um, he actually is completely clean shaven, and he has a, a mohawk that is uh, dyed green. Oh, beautiful! And he's got like facial piercings and um, like uh, uh, earrings and stuff like that. He's got uh, uh, tattoos on his. Uh, uh, shoulders and stuff. He's wearing a he's wearing a, a tank top. Would you would he keep all the piercings? Do you think on while he's sleeping, or are these the types of things that he might pull off just to be? You safe? know what? You're right. Yeah, he probably would have pulled all those up because I myself don't have any piercings. So yeah, these are things I don't think yeah. about, but definitely something he would think about. Okay. So yeah, he's got a he's got a bunch of random holes in his face. Okay. So. Yeah, you see these little little tiny marks where the skin kind of folds in. Um, and what is he dreaming about right now? Uh, he's dreaming about uh, um, a past memory he has uh, on some sort of uh, a terrestrial, or, you know, maybe Earth. I don't know where, but uh, um, he's working on a he's working on a car, and he's got one of his children with him, um, and he himself is like eighteen, uh, so he must have had that child like. To, he's probably 20 at the time so he's you know like really young parent and uh he's got a beer and the the child's struggling to hold up the light and um child drinks for the for the grabs for the the beer and he's like you're gonna be sorry and takes a drink and child split spits it out and like <laughs> makes that face and he's like yeah that'll curl your toes won't it and so he's just remembering old times it's beautiful yeah it's a great memory and you will probably are keeping this singular memory in your mind for weeks and weeks as you're traveling to the frontier 
just having this sort of same dream over and over again as time is kind of strange and, and hypersleep. And as the the light overhead flickers out and everything goes black once more, when it comes back in, we once again see the entirety of that pod in the piercingless face of Big EE, writhing in pain, eyes slammed shut, the gas that keeps all of you unconscious for these long voyages igniting through some sort of mistake someone not checking something and all of a sudden fire inferno on the inside of the pod we flick out there's a little bit of a beep 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 a life monitor and we move into and near another pod that on the side just says clover and when we look over top we look down in what do we see, Melissa? What's what's something we notice physically about Clover, her face? Uh, you would see just this mop of curly black hair um, that looks like a comb hasn't seen it in a very, very, very long time. Beautiful. Um, so it's just all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the first thing you see, because it's just this big poof of curls. And it's probably the only slight bit of movement too as maybe a curl is over the mouth and like you exhale and we see a tiny little strand suddenly move. and what is clover dreaming about so her dream essentially is sort of the just ginormous whiteboard of like formulas and all of that um she's always trying to find sort of that next hybrid um, you know, invention that she can make. Um, and so it's just this infinite, since it's a dream, it's just sort of that infinite, infinite whiteboard with just formulas and erasures and drawings. And, you know, she kind of imagines that like every time she's in hypersleep that she's probably solved it and then can't remember it when she wakes up. Um, so that's just sort of the loop of her life. And then it tail end of, of one of these iterations of this as you're kind of staring at in the dream at this whiteboard you start to see like the whiteboard begins to take on these strange discolorations it just begins to go black and orange and you realize the thing is just sort of melting before you and suddenly everything goes black for a moment we hear a beep beep and when the light comes back on we see in the pod of clover has ignited one just like all the others and she's just writhing around hair, those curls, just beginning to singe and slowly move back up to the scalp. Go back black once more, we zoom over, and finally we come to Veronica, Doc. We zoom up overhead and we look down, and Jen, what's one or two physical things that we notice immediately about about her? Uh, she would be like triangle face. She will a little bit older, probably a looker back in the day, but she would have sunken cheeks and large backs under her eyes and uh, gray hair with white streaks. Uh, we see a little click of the light once more. These flickering lights, this is very peculiar as everything just goes dark. We hear a boop, boop, and then we come back out of that black. We're in a memory of Veronica. What is, what is, the, what is the dream that's been going through her mind for the last few weeks while in hypersleep? Uh, she's been uh, in the middle of surgery working on somebody and you can see her sweating and there's just blood everywhere and then surgery is not going very well. Um, is it somebody you know specifically or is it like a... Uh, just a patient. Just a patient. Okay. And so as as you're working on the surgery, the the beeping of the monitors within your surgical bay is beginning to echo and sync then with the beeping of the life monitors in your pod. Everything flickers black for a moment. When it flickers back up, we once more see the triangle face, the former looker, Veronica, suddenly encased in this, this thin, translucent fire of ignited gas. And then we flicker out again. And everybody else was laying on their backs suddenly the camera f flickers back into existence and we see the back of martial law in a very dark and enclosed space um, unlike everybody else you're laying on your stomach uh, awkwardly 
Like you're almost rigidly laying arms off to the sides, legs extended outward, face directly down into a grate. And you were asleep. You were turned off. You slowly come to consciousness. And I will turn everyone's attention, except for Jen, because we have to fix her, her stuff for next time. To the, to the map that I'm about to give you access to. It says ship. It should be available Uh-oh. now. Uh, so if you look on the top left where all the different tabs are, you should be able to see at least cool. where your character is. Let's see if I can bring this up for other folks on the screen as well. Getting scared. This music's starting to scare me, actually. <laughs> okay. Let's zoom in a little bit. I was gonna be real mad it's if, like, bit. while we're burning, Marshall's just like, "I'm in front of a mirror, flipping my gun." <laughs> <laughs> it's strange that you mention that, Clover, because that is the last thing that you remember, Marshall. And maybe just out of instinct, you reach down to the sides of your of your your pant leg and you feel the empty space on your belt where your gun should be and where the holster for it should be and you don't feel it there now when everyone's awake you probably don't carry the gun around regularly it's dangerous on a spaceship but with everybody asleep this is your time to practice and yet you don't have it on you. You you feel strange. You feel glitchy. Um, you look around and you do not know where you are at. It it's dark. Whoa. It's confusing. You were in the bathroom last. You were in. There were toilets. You were maybe you were gonna mop. You have gaps in your memory. You don't know how you got here you take a moment and you you kind of get your get your 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 bearings and you think you're in one of the lockers near cryo sleep the crew cryo chambers you know you have this vague memory of taking on a job okay. escorting colonists that's there and you know that on your ship those are in the cargo bay but the crew has its own place, and you're in one of the lockers nearby. What are you doing? Mm-hmm. What do you feel like doing? Okay, I'm gonna take a second. I'm gonna stand up. I'm gonna just look around a little bit. Uh, try and pick up if, the, if there's something that feels like it. Which one of these things is not like the other? Maybe see if something feels off. Some obvious stands out. You reach around, you feel the two <laughs> locker. And like I there's apologize. two. My connection seems to be a little bit. Yeah, glitchy. we can hear you fine. It's your video that seems to be kind of glitching a bit. Um, that's okay. If we can hear you, it'll it'll probably catch up. Can you still hear me? Yeah, for me, the sound coming through is kind of like breaking off a little bit. Okay. ready to move forward because you are the linchpin right now at the start of this <laughs> sorry okay. nobody else gets to live because Marshall oh, has no. connection issues okay That's it. <laughs> the end <laughs> okay it looks like your, mo- your video is moving a little I'm better. having connectivity issues it's interesting because you really are okay. like you're actually you're just, you're just method acting um, you know there's a door in front of you and there's That's these... what I do. Yeah. I get deep in the character. Yes. So there's a door in front of you, and there's these two uh, two rows of, of lockers, uh, and you and you know you recognize the place. You know you're in a you're in one of the okay the locker rooms near near Crew What would mm-hmm. you like to do? I'm gonna go try and find other members of the crew. Go in that direction, look around. Okay. 
Uh, so I don't know whether you... Somebody else can tell me what's going on here. I'll move you a bit so that in case you don't have full access yet. You step out into the hallway. Everything's fine. You look around. You can see that yeah. to your left, there's like a little red emergency light that's trying to flicker on. And every now and then you can see it kind of cuts in and then cuts out like it's a like a Christmas light that needs to be replaced. Um, when you move down the hallway, you pass by these two cryo, like the, these two showers where people enter after they've gotten out of cryo sleep that the crew does. They throw the water on super high, uh, super hot because the, the, the gases and such just bring everyone's body temp down so low. Uh, you pop through the door as well. Um, and when you pop through the next door, <clears throat> you're in this like sort of transitory hall. And you know that kind of off to your left, you know, there's like a junction that connects to other levels of the ship. And off to your right, you know, is cryo chamber. And you listen and you and you hear something. You, you, and, and you hear this like strange whistling, but not like whistling through a tree, like a person whistling. But they're not whistling well. It's like they're 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 struggling to to kind of get through it's very it's very wheezy it's uh yeah it, it, it's like they're trying to carry a tune it sounds familiar it sounds almost like a lullaby of some kind but it just sounds awful um but you can't quite pinpoint where it's coming from and as you start to trigger your senses and, and pay attention and listen that's when you realize you don't think the ship is moving you don't hear the normal hum of the engines, the reactor, and you know you're you know you're not at the destination. There's no, there's no way you could be at the destination. Like they, th 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 why would you be mm -hmm. in a closet? You step through the uh, the door on your right, and you can see the cryopod for your friend, your buddy, Captain Bud McCall. You look over, and there is his beautiful bohemian sleeping face um everything's fine lights beeping um he's still sleeping uh what do you do what do you want to do you you know something's wrong at this point all right um is there any sort of anything that i could like any sort of like computer outlet that i could get to, to like try and see if there's any sort of ship information like to see if there's any records of anything occurring recently or mm -hmm. well we'll say there's there's a console or two along your way and you you pop in and you realize as you you, you know there's there's different access points throughout the ship and everyone has different um, security levels to mm -hmm. mother and things like that and you try to see if the ai uh, could respond and as you you try to do so mother seems to be offline Okay. When you look at the cryopods, you realize that the cryopods are still functioning. But that's probably because there's just an emergency backup power. Like, usually all of the, the, the different systems on the ship are maintained by the AI. With the AI down, mm -hmm. that means that these cryopods have a lifespan. It's hard to tell okay. how long that would be, but at some point, these things are going to shut off on their own. Um, well, that sounds terrible. Um, have I been able to better pinpoint where it sounds like that weird whistling or sound is coming from? It goes away. Then two or three minutes later, it comes back. Just uh, kind of, the, it's just the weird way that sound travels on an empty ship. And maybe, okay. maybe well, it's just in your head, too. Well, if... If mother is down and it seems like we are now kind of like you we're now reaching like a limited lifespan on the pods, I would assume that's something that would be appropriate to wake the captain up for. Okay. Roll a com tech. I will. You're pulling somebody out of hypersleep off schedule. That's not the easiest thing to do and it could go bad. So yeah. Just, yeah, you left the kettle on, what is it? Don't kill me, pal. I don't think I will. Okay, you just needed one. That was close. I got 
So I you can't, man, you I've can't got a lot of dice, but I can't push. <laughs> you can't push. Yeah, you better get that one success. Don't worry, it was gonna it was gonna open whether or not it was just a question of whether or not it was gonna something horrible was gonna happen to Bud in the process. Um, oh. Yeah, you managed to open up without any problems, and you you punch through the different panels on the on the pod itself, and after a few moments, uh, you can see that the gas floats out as the pod opens up, and a moment later, Bud, you burst your, your eyes burst open you see the face of marshall um you feel a little nauseated out of sorts as you normally would um but yeah you're you're awake i don't think you would know necessarily immediately that you were brought out early sure but, uh, but yeah, yeah you're awake he reaches over he grabs his hat he puts it on right away he grabs a pack of cigarettes and lights a cigarette he's kind of coughing it's, what is marshall we at our destination, I feel like shit. My head is pounding. You look wonderful, sir. But no, we're not. In fact, there might be an emergency. Mother's down. What? Limited. Yeah. Where are we? I, I can't tell. I can't get any response from any of the consoles. I don't know. Mother's what about down. The colonists? Are they okay? I haven't had a chance to get to everybody. We've got limited reserves for the support here, for you, for everybody. All right, all right. Go, go, go wake up Frenchie, and we'll take a look into this. Uh, I'll, I'll go and, or Eugene's. Go wake up Eugene, and uh, we'll start waking up the others and see if we can get to the bottom of this. Okay. You would know absolutely where they are, so it's nothing, nothing to worry. You all have been around your ship before, so it's no problem. Uh, but you, uh, you would start moving. Um, you would probably have a few things near you, bud, uh, but your full-on clothes would probably be in the lockers, uh, which would be kind of out the door uh, sure. to the east there and, like, either up or down one of the ways. There's a bunch of lockers and showers, and you would probably have put your clothes there. Your weapons and things would probably be in the armory towards the front of the ship, towards the bridge, uh, but right now you've probably got, like, a little towel uh, over top of, like, your your you know your tank top and your 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 sleeping gear uh but you go and you you look you said you're looking for Big E. is that what you said i told okay. marshall go wake up uh yeah eugene mm -hmm. and um i'm gonna go get um frenchy up we'll okay go there first look at those two the pilot and the and the mechanic all right so you go over to frenchy's and you uh you start kind of take a look at the at the panel uh and the panel seems to have shorted out like the the very thing that you would kind of punch in and try to get somebody to uh to to sort of de de-escalate the hypersleep process it's just completely shorted out it's repairable but would likely take a little time doesn't seem to have affected like it does seem like the the cryostasis is still functioning normally on the inside but it's just like the remote control broke for the tv the tv is still working but you can't change the channel. Well, when you look at biggies, that seems fine, Marshall. So if you want to, if you want to wake him up, go ahead and roll contact for it. <laughs> okay. Can That's I assist him? Have? Sure. Take a plus one mod. Because <laughs> I do have, I believe I have contact. I do have contact. Okay. Yes. Take a plus one mod. Or do you want me to roll it and you assist me? Okay. You're really good at it, though, aren't you, Marshall? I've got nine, but I can't push. Okay, I believe in you. You get okay. take 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 my help. It's okay. It just means Adam makes a new character. Yeah. <laughs> fine. All right. And there's like two hundred. How do I make myself add a bonus to it whenever I go to roll? In uh, I don't know. The system doesn't have a pop up like Vessen does. So if you want to just temporarily increase your skill rank uh, before you roll it, that's okay. What I would say. Just we'll do. do. And then just turn I'll do it that way. That yeah. sounds like a nice, easy solution. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Things are it's coming a lot together. It's easy when you're here to guide me. I was <laughs> you got maybe. It. You got a Marshall. Uh, and so, yeah, Biggie, you wake up. Uh, I know what I'm doing. You see these <laughs> two faces. Hey. Uh, Cap the captain's standing there with his arms crossed, and he does not look impressed. You're my rival, by the way. I never named my rival at the beginning. Eugene, you're my rival. Uh -huh. Hey. Eugene, what the hell's going on? You told me diagnostics were clear. We're we're dead in space right now, according to Marshall. What the hell's going on? Uh, it's, I clear them 
Before I woke up. Uh, huh? Who? Get your ass out of bed. Get dressed and find out what's going on with the ship. Uh, what about the rest of me? What about the rest of you? You just want my my ass to get up? I'll get, get my up. Get up. Get out. <laughs> Move down the hallway. Uh, don't, make me, don't make me pull rank. <laughs> Already. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, you, you've known that uh, uh, Frosty may have earned his nickname because he never handled waking up from cryo sleep very well. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, and a lot of people make fun of him for it because he can't handle it once he wakes up. Uh, huh? <laughs> Where am I? You Where said you? what? Go get dressed and find out what's going on at the ship. Oh, I'm, I'm dressed enough. What? Wait, wait, something's wrong with the ship? Marshall, tell him what's going on. I'm going to go check on Frenchie. Oh, hey. Hey. Here, let me give you a, a rundown and Marshall just like very like line item list okay at, in the in the middle of you doing it the lights in the cryo chamber go completely out like pff, they're out and like it's dark in here and marshall you hear that whistling again you hear that what was that uh but like no i didn't hear it though right uh if you you can roll an observation okay i will roll me some observation. Can I make an observation as well? Of course. Yeah. Uh, both of you hear a whistling sound. Like, it's, it, it, and it's not, it's not just like ship noise. It sounds like somebody's whistling, and it's like a really bad, really bad whistle. It sounds like twinkle, twinkle, little star, but it's missing like the rhythm it's like not quite getting right. the beat marshall why didn't you wake me up first who the hell's who else did you wake up you're the first person i found is awkward who's oh. whistling oh hell no um and the lights will flicker back on now so eugene starts uh getting his uh clothing on Uh, and then you look at Frenchie's thing, Biggie, and you would know, like, yeah, you can fix that. It'll take you, like, I mean, you're going to have to run down to one of the one of the bays, grab, grab a couple spare parts. Like, you, you could definitely fix this, but you don't have you don't have everything here. You don't have all your tools. Like, your tools aren't, you know, you don't have every little thing you need here. But it's it's totally fixable. It's just it's just Chuck wanted to do TT2KB tonight. So his, uh, his pause. <laughs> so he's going to die for session one. <laughs> hey, so I, I wouldn't worry about that too much. Uh, Marshall, thanks for uh, pointing that, that out for me. But, uh, no, nah, dude, it, it's fine. Uh, we just got to make sure we get the ship fixed. And I can get to that later. You know what I mean? Marshall, what's the status of Mother? What has she told you about what's going on? Non-responsive. Nothing. Mother's offline. What? Mother is offline. Oh my god! All right, let's get uh, let's get what? Doc, let's get Doc <laughs> and Mars up. Uh, I mean, Doc and Clover up, and uh, let's let's look into this. Okay. Uh, rolls for uh, for getting the two of them up. All right. <laughs> Marshall, I'm gonna assist you on all of these. All right. Yeah. This is gonna go fine. No way am I gonna. Who would I'm do not it first, fail. Doc or Clover? Uh, you know what? Let's just go with like let's let's take care of the people who hate me first. <laughs> so <laughs> let's get Mars bars. Okay. Yeah. You're all good. Okay. All no good. problem. Wake up as well. And, and then try for Ada as well. Do this. No issue. Yeah. Okay. Man. Everyone wakes up. I don't get what what's your problem with me? I'm I'm amazing. <laughs> You're all fine. Y'all woke up. Uh yeah, the two of you you you, you pop out, you it's sort of that awkward you're freezing. People are looking at you, lights are flickering. Um it's an old ship. Uh, but the two of you are both awake. Uh, what what's going on in here? We got a situation. We're dead in space. Dead. Puts the, flicks the We're dead. Here. We're dead in space. 
Oh, space. Mother's down. We're dead. dead. Space. Frenchie uh, decided to do something else tonight, so he's gonna die. We can you go, <laughs> can you go help? Uh, can you go help Eugene and see what's going on with him in case he comes out in a bad, in a bad way? Uh, when you say ready. that, get the medical bay ready for him. You, when you say that, you hear uh, the sound of Eugene uh, losing his last meal that he had before oh. cryo sleep. Uh, in a, in you hear it slap a bucket mm. that he always Run keeps next to bitch. his cryo. <laughs> Doc, go check on Eugene. You know how he is. Yeah, he can wait a little bit. He does this every time. I thought I could hold it. You hear from the other, <laughs> but I didn't. It's okay. Got my bucket. So gross. I'm fine. Oh, that's wonderful. Just Mar have your cryo kit ready to go when you wake up. <laughs> Mark says my milk is disgusting. That's just crazy. <laughs> It's horrible. You look like you drank a gallon of milk. What's wrong with you? What's that? If curdled mine... milk. He said curdled milk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So you deserved it. You, everyone would know that uh, I'm going to go ahead and ping there and there. Those two pings are just different showers and locker rooms where you likely had your normal clothes or just cover like basic coveralls stuff like that um you have living quarters uh but you're not really in them all that often most people just bunk up with somebody else um so you have like a couple of your basic things so um you take a moment probably to to put those back you know put your, your those things those things on any of you who carried guns or whatever wouldn't probably have them they'd probably be locked up in the armory um while you're in uh, cryo sleep which is by the bridge um you would know obviously where mother would be you are on the same deck uh bud as uh as mother uh and it's uh so according to the map it would be to the left uh and it's also sort of the same general direction that you remember hearing the whistling mm. All right, I'm gonna get some clothes on. I'm gonna tell Marshall, come with me. Clover, you come with us as well while these two get uh, Frenchie up. Let's get suited up. Marshall, get that gun ready, and we'll find out what the source of this whistling is. Okay, give me a second. Let me get dressed. And Marshall, you reach Hi. again, and your gun, you don't have it. Marshall, where's your gun? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? This is your function on the ship. This is why you're here to keep us safe. What do you What do you mean you don't know? So, for you, I'm gonna be honest. Up until recently, for some reason, I was offline too. I'm not gonna hold that from you. I'm worried, sir. Yeah, I'm a little worried too, Marshall. I'm a little worried too. All right, suit up. Let's go try and see what's going on and see if we can get Mother back online. Okay. Uh, okay, so who is going is trying to go towards mother? Is anyone dressed and ready to go? Okay, anyone staying behind or anyone doing something else like sabotaging Frenchie's pod? <laughs> I uh, went ahead and went and got dressed and then uh, uh, reporting for duty, Captain. As you're coming back from mm -hmm. from changing the lights, just completely go out again. And, and you've been on the ship long enough that you can kind of feel your way to the door and everything, but it just complete, completely goes out. Hey, not not funny, Marshall. Could you turn the lights back on? No. <laughs> God damn it, Eugene. Get this thing running. All right. Well, I got to see to see, so, uh, and I need to see to walk. Uh, oh, wait. Here we go. And then it flickers back on. Yeah, I. Hey, did y'all see that? You know them lights went out. Yes, we we yes. saw it. They went out for you too. That's that's weird. That's that's like real. True, it is real. It's happening right now. You yeah. Go... But you go up to the door to leave to go towards where mother is. And you, you kind of go through the... It's one of those things that has a little bit of, like, pneumatics to it. And 
you realize that the door is not opening. It's jammed. So it's it's one of the spins, and you know that part of the spinning the e is like it's, it makes it a little bit easier because there's these little pneumatics that kind of help with the turning. Um, but it seems to not. You try to you try to turn the turn the wheel, and it's just completely and utterly jammed. Just one go. Somebody could make a heavy machinery roll if they want to try to open it. Hey, you got to use a cheater when the hydraulics ain't working. Eugene, get up here. Uh, uh, hydraulics. All right. That's what I meant to say. All oh right. no, it could be it could be pneumatics. I don't know. I'm just saying stuff. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, um, so, Eugene, roll a roll a heavy machinery, and you can take plus one. I'm sure somebody in the group can help you. All right. I got a. So when you've got like uh, a maintenance jack, let's see, what does that do? Oh, I gotta go through the item. Anyways, I'll I'll look it up later. Um, so ranged combat and increase my, I mean, not range, heavy uh, machinery. Heavy machinery and increase, my... and increase the skill level by one. Okay. Who's helping me? I don't have heavy machinery. Uh, do I? It's mainly it's it's mainly a, a this is more like a strength check. So I'm just giving it heavy machinery, so anyone can do it. Marshall, you can take you can you can yeah. Get I'll help. Yeah. You have you have heavy machinery. Yeah. Okay. As the doc, Ooh. as the Mars doctor pushes the Marshall aside and says, "No, no, no, I can handle this." Okay, so go All ahead. Right. Black last time on three, not one, two, three. Then go right. Left, loose, right, tight. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. We're going to go left and we're going to on three. <laughs> One, two, three. Okay. Okay. It is laborious and it doesn't look good for the first couple <laughs> seconds. <laughs> One or two other people suddenly, and you can hear as something grinds, and then you hear something snap and fall and clatter on the other side of the door, but the wheel suddenly breaks free and just starts spinning loosely. That wasn't me. Biggie, you know I, something's going to... You're going to have to repair that later. Well, I'll have to fix that later. I don't know why it got stuck, though. You swing the door open. Let me go ahead and unlock it now. You swing the door open, and you can see, like, right in front of you on the ground, uh, there is a bar. Just a, just a basic lead or steel bar. Uh, it's got a little bit of bend to it, but otherwise it kind of looks like it was maybe slid through the wheel on the other side and just the sheer force and the of moving around of the wheel on, the, on your side managed to, to kind of set it loose and it fell um, but you also notice that the wheel is just continuing to spin it's not like tightening or anything so you're gonna have to fix that later but you you look to your right to your left you know that to the right and to the left there are these little elevators that go up and down to different decks and right in front of you there are uh doors uh like the one i just opened that lead towards mother you're on you're on the topmost part of the ship there's multiple decks you're on the topmost deck is the barracks on this deck it is not it's one deck below all right We've obviously got somebody loose in the ship. Change of plans. Mm -hmm. Stick together, mm -hmm. and we need to go to the barracks. We need to get armed. All right. We're not losing any one of well, you to whatever or whoever this is. You know, they could be in this room right now, because the only way you could lock this like this is if you was in the room. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't leave the room and then lock it like this. Yeah, yeah I'd actually that. like to investigate, kind of look and see if there's anything out of place. We can't, you... can't quite shut the door again, because one of them bushings came loose. Mm -hmm. uh, so you you want to? So what was it you're trying to do, Marshall? I want to try and see. I mean, we have a good idea of what happened here, but I want to see if there's anything maybe out of place or something hidden, or maybe get an idea of we, maybe where this might have been yanked from, which might help give us a clue of where somebody might have come in and out from. Yeah, sure. Uh, roll observation. I will try. Observation. Oh, I'm that. Okay. In theory. All right. And so. Yeah. That, uh, 
Nice. And okay. so, yeah, with investigator, that pretty much means I can get what happened here. Is there anything hidden here? If so, where? And okay. are there any details here out of place? Investigator is a great talent. I love it. So you know that right in front of you, uh, on the other side of this wall, uh, are basically air scrubbers that your your ship has, and mm -hmm. there's a and it's not accessible from this level, uh, but like it's just like this long shaft that goes up and down the the middle of the ship, and you can see that there is a panel uh, that has a little like a, on the wall, a little metal panel that's a little bit of jar. You go up to it, and you can see that you can kind of peel it back. And inside, there's all of these different pipes and wires. And you can mm -hmm. see that there is a chunk of pipe that has been, like, a, a section of it has just been yanked out. And when you hold up the piece of pipe that's on the ground, it fits perfectly. Someone ripped out a section of, of the pipe here and used that to jam the door itself. When you move, uh, when you kind of move up and down this hallway here, uh, north and south, um, you check out the elevators. The elevators uh, are completely jammed. Like, you go up to them, it's just like Frenchie's pod. The actual mm -hmm. the actual panel itself doesn't seem to work. Nothing seems to open. You try to call the elevator, uh, the lift from a different deck. It doesn't seem to call. Like, the lights aren't lining up. So this, this whole section, there seems to be a series of, of sort of smashing that's happened here. Um, the doors on either side of the, the scrubber wall are open just fine. Like they seem to open. They don't seem to have the same, they have. They don't seem to have been jammed. Somebody knows that shit pretty well. And just kind of, you know, point out what he's observing as he's going through everything. Okay. They need to look for the pipe here. I've done a good job over here and here on these panels. So you might... I'm not ruling out space gremlins, <laughs> but it seems illogical. Could be space gremlins. Um, <laughs> you... It, it might... It might have been more of a just use whatever's around you. Like, there's really mm -hmm. nothing else in this in this run of hallway. It's a very, like, just a, just a transitional hallway. And so they just pulled out a, a panel and just ripped something from the panel. There's plenty of loose panels on your ship here and there. It's old, so it's possible that this could have been uh, already loose, and they just whoever it was just made it looser. And just pulled it clear on out. Hey, so what, what, what you want me to do, Captain? We get one of these elevator shafts open so we can get to the barracks and arm ourselves. There's obviously someone on here trying to sabotage a ship. Yeah, I can do that. You just uh, hold on to your butts. <laughs> uh, you would also know that there are, there is a staircase, uh, like a stairwell that goes down. It is locked during cryo sleep. Uh, Marshall, you uh, you know that it's locked, and usually it would probably take like a, a there's like maintenance ladders and such here and there. Mm -hmm. So there's others way there other way down, but like you can totally try to make um, a tech roll on uh, on the uh, the elevator itself. It's going to be a com tech roll to get the the panel functioning. Um, you All would right. also know that if mother is down, if there's if if the ship's not moving, like you don't hear the normal hum. It's a question mm -hmm. of is the how how what's the state of the reactor that's powering the entirety of the ship. I mean, all right, change plans, Eugene. You go to the reactor. Oh, all right. I can. I can try and work on this lift here. Then, if you want to do that, there is the ladder. If we want, hey, let's go to the ladder. So we're splitting the party. Yeah, of course we are. Best thing to do. <laughs> Does anybody want to uh, accompany Eugene? I'm pretty good with Comtech, if that's going to be helpful. Oh, I don't know much about that stuff, so yeah, be good. Um, was you saying something about visiting that armory first, though? Is it on the way there? Mother? So the uh, if you're looking, the reactor itself is. Uh, is one deck below. So you have the top tier is cryo and mother. The second tier is kind of living quarters, bridge, la like med lab, stuff like that. 
Uh, underneath it is going to be cargo bay, and then there'll be a reactor uh, sort of on the rear of the ship with a variety of like coolant uh, uh, coolant rooms as well. Uh, the reactor is so large that it kind of extends up the backside of the ship, but if you want to literally access the uh, the direct monitors, you would actually have to go down and below the cargo decks. It would, like it's literally just three decks down. So we stick together, we go take the stairs down a floor, figure out what's going on, go to the barracks, and then we'll split from there. So, uh, what all do you think I would have on me, like? Because I don't imagine, like, I'd be keeping, like, maintenance jacks and cutting torches and all that in the residential. You would probably have on, like, anything you would have had in your pockets, more than okay. likely. So if it's yeah. if anything's, like, a handheld tool or something like that, uh, you probably could have, that you could fit your pockets, that's fine. Anything that's bigger than that, or weapons, weapons, and, like, if it's a knife, that's totally fine. If it's, like, a stun baton, that's fine. Uh, but anything, like, gun rise would probably be locked up. Mm-mm, nothing like that. All right, so. All right. Well, we got to go down to the shop in order to get anything of, uh, you know, consequence for whatever is ailing us. Okay. Let's move. All right. All right. Mm-hmm. So where, uh, where's, where's the first stop then? So either we're trying to fix the elevator or we're trying to unlock the door to get to the stairs. Okay. Yeah, let's get to the stairs. Let's go to the stairs. Mm-hmm. We'll take the stairs down to the next floor. We'll hit okay. up the barracks, and then we can go from there to the re- whoever wants to go to the reactor, and the others go look on the colonists. So right down the hall where I'm pinging is, you know, that that's the direction. I'll go ahead and move you, Jen. Is that's the direction where the, um, the stairs are. Uh, the door is locked when you go over to it. Um, uh, however, it's not like... It's not actually busted. It's not. It's, no one's put a, a bar in the middle of it, uh, so it doesn't. It takes a moment, and you're able to, to quickly unlock it. Um, you also notice as you're coming down the hallway, the door to Mother, which is just west of you, just beyond this uh, this wall that you're you're standing on, uh, Bud. Um, you know that the door to Mother. Not only is it always closed, but there's two doors to access Mother, and you're the only one that can go in that you know of. Both of those so, doors are now open. It. Okay. I will say Marshall. Watch my back. Of course. And I'm going to go in. Okay. You go inside. And you can see the panels all around uh, that you would use, the terminals that you use to access Mother. Um, all of them are dark. Like all of the different old-fashioned TV screens from the 1980s with right. the glass. You know, all of them are completely dark. Uh, you type away at the keyboard. No response. Turn it off, turn it back on again. That doesn't work. Um, Mother seems to be offline. Okay. Uh, is there any way for me to lock the doors? Leaving? Yes. No, absolutely. Yeah, that's okay. that, that's definitely something that you would be able to do. We'll say that there's like a, a punch code that you can easily do that. I'm say, Marshall, don't tell the others about this. All right? It stays between us. They don't need to know. Understood. Now, the rest of you who are hanging back, um, as you're standing by the stairwell to go down, uh, which is right next to where Biggie is, you once again, and all of you can hear this, you hear the sound of that whistling again. And uh, I'm not sure if if Veronica or Clover were awake the last time. Uh, so you hear it, and again, it's just like it's just like not the great. It's a kind of breathy, and it's uh, it's like twinkle, twinkle, little star. But it's just the rhythm is just absolutely terrible. Whoever is whistling this has not a musical bone in their body. And so we're, this is us on the next level? Yeah, so if you want to go down, I can move you. It's fine. Uh, yes, please. Yeah, let me go ahead and do that. So if you go down, so is everyone, everyone's coming down okay? Sure. All right. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, there I am. 
could have just copy paste all of you, but I'll do this. This works too. Okay, so all of you move uh, to the second, uh, sort of like the, the second deck. Now, just again, all of you know the place, so like this isn't the case of you not knowing where stuff are, so I'll just kind of ping it around for you. Uh, bridge is off to the left. Uh, not that far away. There's again, there's a small like maintenance room right here with a maintenance ladder. Uh, but other than that, on the other side of that is the bridge. You also know that. Uh, let me go ahead and move this for the stream as well. Um, so you also know that right above you, Marshall, is the the bathrooms, and that's the last place you remember being. Uh, to the south, uh, like well, straight ahead and kind of to the right and to the left are like your EEV pods and such. You have like these life pods uh, that are off to the south and to the north. That's also where you're, uh, where you store your uh, your suits, your Enviro suits. Uh, and the armory is also down here to the south uh, through a lock through a door that's normally locked. Um, there are a couple doors right next to you where you just come up out of the stairs. A lot of this stuff is just, there's so many doors because in case things need to be sealed, things need to be sealed. Uh, and uh, you, you know that off through these doors, you can kind of move towards the mess hall, you can move towards the med lab, you can move towards uh, the, the living quarters and such. Um, and even further back into the, like to, to other things like the Botany Bay and, and other stuff. Um, so it's a question of which way you would like to go. I think I kind of want to check out the last place I remember being awake. Okay. All right. So you... Uh, it's up north, he said. Yeah. So you move up north, and you open the door, and you see a fairly dirty, rusty bathroom. You can go in the door. It's fine. Marshall, where right. are you going? I'll call down the hallway. Just investigating the last place I have recall... You look around, so, and it, uh, on the surface, everything looks normal. It's messy and gross, like it usually is. All right. Step in. Look around. Uh, so, like, this is the place where I kind of blacked out. I want to look and see if anything's off. Mm -hmm. Leave the gun sitting on the sink counter. <laughs> Roll an I mean, observation. I don't know. It's, it's taped behind one of the toilets. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, go ahead and roll an observation. Okay, I will. Well, all right. I'm doing it. And I'm Ooh. failing. Okay. All those dice and yeah. nothing. <laughs> and no pushing. I mean, you don't see the mop. But other than that, yeah. It just looks like a dirty... Nothing. Thing. Maybe the thought crosses like how disgusting humans are through your, your Android brain. Sorry, so I thought maybe I would find something in there. There's no... There's nothing. I don't know. It's very strange. You get your recall? No. I don't I don't understand what's happening. Oh, uh, so you don't have total recall? I don't. Hmm. All the more reason for us to get armed. Uh, Are you done, Marshall? If so, let's go. I am. Sorry for the delay, sir. Uh, bud, you go up and the door's locked. Uh, but you punch in your code and it opens just fine. Um, you step inside and you can see like off to your left where I'm pinging. Are, those are the escape pods. You see these hatches. Like You don't open them. Don't go in them unless it's an emergency. There's a lot of automation that goes involved. And so if you start opening that up, like bad things could potentially happen. Um, you can see that there's these little displays that suggest that the, the pods are still there. They haven't been ejected. Everything's there. Uh, there's one room on the southern side here that's open. It's just a closet. There's just little odds and ends. It's like a broom closet and whatnot. You can see there's cleaning supplies and such. And then in this little uh, this little square room, you know, that's where you keep your guns, your, your weaponry. Um, and you can see that uh, when you look at the, the, the same pad that you've seen before, that you punch in your... It's been ripped off the wall. And you can see that in place of it, it's like an empty... Uh, like an empty electrical socket. Um, it would take, to open the door, it would take a heavy machinery roll uh, to try to, to manually just like 
rip the door open, like reach your fingernails in and push to the side, or it would take some time uh, to go and fetch like repair parts and, and Big Eve to, to fix it. Oh, yeah. you... Go ahead. What you looking at there, Captain? He points to the panel that's been ripped off. What can you do with this, Eugene? Ah, uh, I see the problem. Well, I mean, we could try and force her open, or we can go down and get the parts to fix it. How long is it going to take to fix? Longer than we got. All right, let's do the muscle. Marshall, get over here. Clover, Doc, give us a hand. Okay. Yes, sir. So I think it was Veronica who actually gets the plus one, who gets to give the plus one since she's got the heavy machinery. Mm -hmm. So um, go ahead and roll it. Uh, who, either 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 Jen or Adam can roll it and then take the plus one from it. Uh, you want me to? Take my plus, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Biggie. Did it roll? Uh, yes, it did. Woo! Yeah, it yeah, did. And you managed to like pull it over. Not only that, but you do it relatively quietly too. Like you were expecting it to make this loud racket as you rip it off, uh, you know, out of the, out of the, the door, you know, the door itself. Uh, but you're able to open it up and you look inside and you can see the various cabinets and drawers that carry your guns and weaponry that you would lock up and all of you now have access to those things so anything you drive in your character sheet your handguns your stun batons your whatever it is you might have might have grabbed you don't have access to you load up get your ammo what about ready. marshall's weapons yeah, i was actually curious like did they get put back up in here uh they are not here actually Okay. <clears throat> I don't have anything in this room. Well, Clover, did Janet buy a gun or no? Uh, I have the stun baton. Okay. Okay. I mean, I so my revolver's probably the thing that I keep on me, but uh, would the shotgun still be in here? Uh, if you don't normally keep it on you, yes. Yeah, that one. I think he does like the silly cowboy nonsense while he's walking around, but I don't think he'd walk around with like a, a freaking shotgun. Then yeah, yeah, your shotgun would be in here, for sure. Uh, Jen, go ahead and roll an observation test since you're technically still out. And like we're we're just by the token layout, you're out in the hall now. Okay. You um, you hear whistling and you hear it coming from the bridge, which is off to the left of of where you're you're currently standing. Uh, you all hear that? Some whistling. Oh, I must be sleeping still. It's coming from the bridge. Anybody? No, I heard that earlier. Yeah. What is that tune? All right, I'll draw my pistol. Marshall, let's go. All right. Okay, are you approaching boldly and without care for sound? No, stealth, or are we stealth? stealthily. Okay. Mobility rolls, please. Hey, don't we want to get, get in that other door? And is this everybody or just the lowest mobility? Hmm. Yeah. Well, the two of them are the ones that are moving up. So anybody I'm gonna, else? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to push it. I'll take Not that it. stress. Okay, fair enough. Okay. Uh, looks pretty good. Oh, I need to roll stress. Yeah. Keep them together. Or... My oh, one... Oh, I'm good. Oh, yeah, you're Ooh. fine. My one tiny complaint is that the blinking doesn't go away. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh, kind my. of annoying, isn't it? I can delete the message, which I will, so we don't have to All keep right. looking at it. But yeah, I, 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 pistol. I really wish they would do that. Okay. Start walking down the hallway, a little stressed. Okay. Sweat's pouring down my forehead. Take my sleeve, wipe it aside. Look okay. over at Marshall, nod as we approach. Okay. Uh, let me just do a quick roll here. Nothing to worry about. Nothing at all. Everything's fine. Marshall, get up here. Okay. Done, done. Fact. You. So why don't you let me take point? No offense. Done and done. Okay. Marshall, you move up and you, you, the door is a, like the door, like these, these doors are like, um, I mean, a jar is not the best word for it, but it basically is. It's not fully open. It's not fully closed. Um, mm -hmm. You, uh, you peek inside and you can see, go ahead, go ahead and make it visible to you. You 
can see, uh, there's some kind of person that seems to be working on one of the consoles. Looks like the captain's console, like the command console, uh, on the bridge itself. They don't seem to have noticed you. And as you're watching, like every so often, you can hear they try to whistle. Does it look like a? Does it look like that picture? Like where it's the weird? Yes, it's exactly like that picture. So, snafu, so snafu. It is not situation normal. It is all fudged up. That thing. It's not human. I mean. We didn't like Marshall's like whispering back oh, no, to no. you. I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Being yeah, that's what I assume. Sure. And, and Jeff, we had nothing like this on a ship. Oh, we took off right. Like this no. isn't like. No. Um. Let's see. What's like a knowledge? What can we do for like a knowledge roll? Like a. No, oh, no. General. <laughs> um, Meanwhile, uh, uh, Eugene is trying to get that other door open. Observation. Mm. Uh. I'll Goodbye. take. I'll, uh, it's more of like understanding like what you're looking at. I'll take a yeah. com tech roll, or yeah, I'll okay. take a com tech roll. Um, can you ping Adam? Just hold down where you're looking. Okay, that is a hatch to one of the the EV, the escape pods. You oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, no, I wouldn't want to. Yeah, you probably wouldn't okay. want to mess with that. No, then that never mind. Okay. Forget disregard. Okay. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> right? yeah. Maybe Don't worry. he might want soon. To. Um, <laughs> uh, so how would that? How was that uh, com tech roll? I didn't see it. So oh, okay, mine passed. Okay, I got one success. So okay. I guess is that can, something I would even have a chance to roll? I don't know if ro you should roll it too, because there's there's layers of things I can give you here. Uh, okay, oh, wow. Okay, Whoa. I'm just gonna give you all of it. Whoa. <laughs> um, both Captain and Marshall, you would know these as as working Joe androids. They are a Seekson tech, uh, mm. biotech form of android. They are sort of rudimentary. Um, they are mainly used for sort of like hard, la you know, like labor here and there. Um, mm -hmm. They are decidedly not human. Like when you like they, they're not like Marshall and could potentially pass if necessary. Right. Marshall, you would also know, and it probably makes the most sense since you're the one who's been out on, uh, you know, out on the ship for the past few weeks. Um, at some point, you had, you know, you probably had some communiques here and there from Mother. Um, a shipment or uh, sort of like a, a factory of these, like with like a good, the number, like you, like there's the number is uncertain how many, could be 50, could be 100, mm -hmm. disappeared. No one knows what happened to them. Um, and a lot of, and like it's sort of frontier gossip. People are kind of a little concerned that there's these, these androids that, that have much like your own model have had some questionable moments in the past. And here is one. And they're in like some dark kind of navy bluish, dark gray coveralls, nothing remarkable about them. And they seem to be doing something to the command, the command uh, panel. All right, so this I'm might be some of those models that went missing before. They are known to sometimes go a little Hey, Wire, how do you want to approach? Fire Will. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, since you're doing this from stealth and I failed the the roll to see you, what I'll do is I'll do the whole give you two cards. Um, well, actually, I'll just give you... Yeah, I'll, just, I'll give you two cards and you can kind of choose which one's better. Uh, so let me go ahead and deal initiative cards to everybody um, and then I'll deal a second one to Marshall and the captain so hopefully that should have popped up for you if it mm -hmm. did, yep. let me know and if anyone did, I think Jen's the only one who's not on this list we'll have to figure out what to do with her I'll draw Jen's so I know when she Ooh. has to go all right, so Jen's on initiative six. Um, okay, does anyone have a one? I do. Okay. Uh, anyone have... Okay, so 
So, te- so assuming that Big E.E. E. is up there with them and overhearing all this, assuming all of you are together, you can go first. Hey, so we we doing this? We taking it down? Captain just nods. Just okay. Like, and he, he like he looks annoyed at you, and he's just like, Shh. Uh, so Biggie ain't got nothing on him because his gun is actually a tool, which is down in in the um, you know, the hole below. Mm-hmm. So he's gonna just move up there and and uh try and tackle him to the ground and like start beating on him with his fists okay try and try and make sure that he can't hurt no one else okay so we'll say it's a it's a we'll say outside the door and on into the bridge is you know is a, a zone of movement so it's, okay cool okay um let me I did, let me get the rest of these numbers by the way clover what'd you end up with for initiative the card 10 10 okay uh and then Marshall, what'd you get? What's your uh, three and eight were the two cards you tossed out. Yeah, so you you would go with three, and then the intro mm-hmm. is sitting at a nine. We'll say it's gonna go just before Clover. Um, okay, so uh, Biggie, you're gonna charge in. Yeah. All right, I like it. So describe right. how this happens here as you come bursting in. Are you saying anything? Or are you trying to like? Or are you like sneaking, like, like sneaking up and then trying to clock it from behind? Or are you trying to just like bull rush? I'm trying to bull rush in because, uh, um, you know, I'm hoping that uh, the the sheer uh, like shock of me coming through is enough. He doesn't really put you know all that much together when it comes to sense. So, um, yeah, he's gonna just roll in there and he's like. Uh, you know, he's just yelling like, I didn't want you in here. You, you got to get on out of here. And uh, he runs up and just starts uh, kicking and punching and okay. um, trying to, to get to the side so that he's not in the way of the guns. Okay, sure. So move up and then roll a kick or punch. Like there should be a, an unarmed thing in your in your inventory you can click. You got to grab a magazine on the way there and roll it up and shove it in its mouth. <laughs> Nice. Uh, that should have worked. Uh, yeah. It. So that is one success. So that will do one damage to this thing. Uh, let me check to see if it's got any armor. Are you trying to grapple it? Or just hit it? I think you just said punching and kicking, right? Yeah, punching and yeah, kicking. Yeah, so you're just yeah. punching and kicking. And so, yeah, you'll do it. He doesn't want to start grappling when guns are behind him. <laughs> That's what I was worried about when you said yeah, you're going to attack. Like... Okay. So you run up. So you we all watch as, uh, what does it say, Marshall's first? Oh, because right, you're all on top of each other. That's why. Okay, there we go. So we see Biggie run in. And you, then you say you step off to the side. So we'll say you step off to the side. And then you start kicking and punching this working Joe Android um, who turns like, as you do, it's just like very like robotic, like arms kind of stiff eyes suddenly lighting up mouth suddenly light up. You can see that it has a whole panel on the back of the command of the, the captain's command uh, console kind of ripped open. seems to be going through some wires and things. Oh, okay. So if he's doing that, how about, can we flavor text it? Like I just put my boot um, uh against the back of his head and pushed him into the console like to yeah. to do that yeah yeah that's what he'd do and so we'll say stomping he'll get back up uh just so that they could shoot if they want and like he's <laughs> he's got stuff in his in his head now kind of covering his eyes and he's trying to f- reaching it out and you could hear that he's continuing to try to do the whistle and that whistle is beginning is getting faster and you're and you're sensing like this this increased pace to it uh bud you're next all right i'm gonna go into the room kind of get into a corner over here out of the way and i'm gonna shoot okay go for it i'm gonna give him like a like a point of uh, protection because you're shooting over top of the console but go for it oh that's all i need okay uh let me roll one to see if i get lucky uh, i do not uh and so yeah that'll that'll go through so that you hear the gun fire off now i should also note that you're firing a gun in an enclosed uh starship no. Crap on the on the yeah oh, yeah, yeah. on That's the right. bridge on the bridge. Uh, so nothing ever nothing bad. Target. 
yeah, you hit him, no problem. And so you see this little little burst of like of whitish goo just spray out. Maybe a little bit gets on Biggie, um, and it is uh, it is now going to be uh, Marshall's turn. Um, if possible. I tried to get like virtually like as close to almost point blank as I can. Oh yeah, maybe you can even... move in. That's fine. Like it's just he's not that far away. It's like one zone away. Okay. Like maybe if you want to go point blank, you can go right up to him. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Which because this is I don't have my pistol and I want to prevent spray. So just having the barrel up to as close to him as possible. Sure. And then uh, yeah, we'll do the thing with the stuff and see how that turns out. Okay. Uh, wow. So that's gonna be. So how much damage does the pump action do? Does it say? Base three. It says base three damage. Yep. So you run up. Ooh. You take you take your shotgun, you cock it, and then you just you just blast him right in the right in the stomach, like super clear, like super easy. And there is a burst of fettuccine alfredo that just goes <laughs> all over the place as you have uh, you have exploded, and that actually is going to. Move, boom, bring them down to zero health. I'm going to go ahead and roll for a critical injury for the synthetic here. And that makes perfect sense. Uh, internal nice. organs spill out, and the android is completely immobilized. And so you see a giant hole in the stomach and the abdomen area where the shotgun just blew through it. And it just... Uh, see and you can see the lights, the eyes and the lights begin to flicker out, and it just leans over. And it's like a little lowercase r now, just just slumped against the, the command console. Shh, shh. It's okay now. <laughs> Breakfast served! <laughs> There's milk everywhere. It looks like your bucket there, Frosty. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So, um, Clover and Veronica, roll observation tests. Okay. Both of you hear something from behind you all. Um, you know, you hear the gunfire and the shotgun fire and all kind of stuff going ahead in the, in the bridge. But you hear the... Because it's, it's otherwise a very, very quiet moment. And you can hear the slamming of boots on the ground like a, like these echoing boots and then a door flies open behind Veronica and Yo, behind us behind us behind us let me go ahead and... so as you all are kind of looking at the one on the on the bridge a second one busts out uh, from behind a door that goes towards the living quarters on the ship uh, we'll keep the we'll keep the order as it's going and it's actually Veronica's turn. So Veronica, you've got you've got just a few steps away from you is this 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 working Joe creepy looking android. This is the androids from Alien Covenant or Alien uh, Isolation. Um, you just heard a bunch of gunshots in the bridge behind you. Uh, what do you want to do? Oh, so what's it? <laughs> I'm gonna go over there and try to. Uh, keep it pinned, I suppose. Okay. Because it looks like I'm by myself. Yeah, you are by. You you're not. Uh, Clover is nearby. I'm in the hallway. Yeah, we both of you him. are in the hallway still. Me and my uh, stun stick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna try to pin it against the wall. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and just roll a strength test. So I think you. I think the attributes are clickable on your sheet. Uh, not yeah. <laughs> Zero okay. successes. Oh, my hand. Do you want to push that? It's it's also oh, no. okay. So you I'm try to, and this thing you 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 go to push, and it's not like a human where if you would have pushed them, at least they would have give a little bit. Your arms just sort of stop, just like, and your face goes forward and kind of smashes a little bit into the chest of this. Uh, oof, oof. It's got a stiff one here. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, uh clover your turn <laughs> phrasing yeah. um 
I'm gonna come. <laughs> actually, I'm sorry. It's not your turn. It's actually the oh. android's turn. It's the android android's turn. I didn't. I hadn't actually rolled uh, initiative yet for this one. So, go ahead and go, uh, because that's the the old initiative, the one that the androids that's dead. So you're good. Okay. So I'm gonna come up over here and and I did yell before I left, like behind us, behind sure. us, and then that's I'm fine. going to attack it with my. Uh, um, what is this thing called again? Stun baton. Sounds good. One success. All right, so. You just uh, have one damage, okay. stun baton. So this will do one damage as you run up and you just jab your stun baton into its side, uh, and it will go ahead and take that one damage. Um, next up, we'll start again. I'm just adding this to the combat really quick, and it'll move back to big E's turn. You hear behind you from where you just came uh, both Veronica and Clover kind of shouting out, shouting, there's something going on behind you. Now, I'm going to look around in my immediate vicinity since there was like work being done. Is there any like chunky objects nearby? Like, I know that there's no rocks on this spaceship, but is there at least like a, a, a solid no like uh, yeah might be a fire uh, extinguisher on the bridge. I'll say, we'll yeah, say there's there... a wrench. We can say there's a wrench. I think okay, I, I'm going to... Yeah, yeah. I want to pick up that wrench and, and run out towards whatever direction there the noise is coming from. Okay. Uh, so we'll say if... Uh, you'll We'll say that you, pro you probably can't get to him and attack on the turn, but you can sure. probably, with both your fast and your slow... Well, we'll say your fast is sort of to pick up the wrench, and then your slow is to kind of move back out to where you were before you charged into the the bridge. And you can you can see what's going on. You can see the two of them are fighting this uh, the same model of android that you just fought on the bridge by the door. Uh, just okay, to... um, like there? Uh, yeah, anywhere. It's it, it anywhere. Like here's fine. Like anywhere where you can actually see it, it's fine. It's it's. I know it's got a grid, but don't worry about the grid. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was just going to grab you. I think I do actually have a wrench in here. Uh, yep, there's a blunt instrument. So I just moved the blunt instrument into your uh, into your inventory. Nice. Uh, all right, so then next up, it's going to be Bud. What do you want to do? Yeah, I'm going to run out there as well with my, with my gun and okay. pistol. And that's the, is that the whole turn, or can I shoot from uh, there now? Well, since you didn't pick anything up, uh, we'll, we'll say, yeah, we'll say you can shoot. Um, is this set a negative or anything, though, with uh, uh, the dock in front of me? Yeah, so what I'll say is, like, it'll probably be more of a... Yeah, I'm going to do a negative mod since you're basically shooting th into into engagement with multiple people. Uh, so do, like, a minus two. So, like, two successes then to hit? Uh, yeah, we can do it that way, too. You can say that. Oh, I was just going to say just, oh, is there... minus two to, you, to the rolls. Yeah. Is it possible to assist in combat? It is, but you have to kind of call out what you're doing and how it's going to be done. And if you if you had if you had if you've already spent your actions, there's really nothing you can do. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold okay. off. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna wait. It's a dangerous um, shot. Yeah, okay. and I'm not that good with a gun. I'm gonna wait for the mar <laughs> marshal to get up here. Well, it is the marshal's turn. Yeah, I'll hustle up there. I'm a little concerned using a shotgun. I may not have a good clean shot. Yeah, you definitely. I can't go wrong. <laughs> you definitely would be a little concerned with whether or not Veronica uh, would would kind of get the brunt of that. But yeah, you can get out into the hallway just fine. Yeah. So yeah, I'll basically just hustle up as okay. close as possible. Sounds good. Uh, and Veronica, it's now your turn. Uh, uh, this thing, I put it on seven, so you actually get a turn before it goes. What would you like to do? Uh, well, I assume I can hear them coming up behind me. Oh, yeah, you and... can look and see them now, too. <laughs> Obviously, since I'm not doing very good and it, it did not move when I pushed it, I'm just kind of back away out of the way because okay. that means they've gotten to us. Uh, sure. Roll a mobility test. Okay. Because it can choose to follow if it wants, but it won't. It'll let you go, and you, yeah, you managed to sort of disentangle yourself. And do you want to go back down the same hall with them, or you can kind of go around a different wall if you want? I know you can't see the map, but uh, I want to back up on the other side Sounds of good. Clover. The other side of Clover? Okay, that works. All right, 
So then it's going to be the android's turn, and since Clover is right there, uh, just teed up mm. like a golf ball, I think that they're going to go ahead and attack you. So, Me and my three health. Yeah, this is going to turn towards you. Uh, what do I have? Inventory. Uh, they all they also are carrying a blunt instrument. So this thing is just going to turn to you, and it's just going to swing with what looks just like one of those pieces of pipe that you saw uh, that was blocking the door to the, the cryo chamber. Uh, that's two successes. Uh, so you're going to take two damage. Uh-oh. I'll catch you if you fall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm close. Okay. Oh, my. Uh, so then it'll be your turn, Clover. Uh, now that guns have arrived, I would like to uh, back up. Okay. Uh, it just used its actions, so I'm not going to make it sort of chase after you. So, yeah, you can go ahead and move. And yep. we'll come back around to the top in Big E. It's now free of any, like, it's not entangled with anything else, but you just saw it, like, take a, a nice cold shot at Clover. Like, it just whacked her across the her big bushy hair with, uh, with uh, an equal. Uh, you leave our lucky Clover alone, dang it. And uh, uh, he runs up and he just uh, clocks the. Uh, um, there we go. Oh yeah, wrong one. <laughs> he runs up and clocks the tries to clock the uh, uh, worker in the face. Yeah, go for it. Go ahead and roll. It should be clickable. The blunderment. Okay, do you want to push? Of course. Do it. Um, now, yeah. Is there a button to push on? Yeah, just this? hit the gr the green dice, that little green dice where it says underneath zero success in the chat window. That's the button. Okay. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you managed to clock him, uh, and he uh, clock him, and he takes uh, he takes a point damage. All right. So then, after you, we move over to the cat. Yeah. <laughs> it's only know. one person now. But. Yeah, only one person I can accidentally shoot. Mm -hmm. You got a shot, take it. <laughs> shoot him in the leg, he falls. Would, would I have a minus shot. to this uh, still, or? I, I think I think it should be because he's he's right in front of him. So take a uh, take a minus one mod. So when you go to roll, just drop your skill one, and then add it back in after you roll. Okay, I will. That's what I do shoot. all the time with Vessen. So. That's kind of what I'm going to do. All right. What's the damage on your... Uh... Uh, one. Okay. One armor piercing. All right. That'll go through. My my laser. My laser. All right. Uh, Marshall, your turn. I would try to, much like last time, if I can, get to this space up above and so I'm between him and Mars Bar. Sure. No problem. Then, uh, and I'll yeah. say, I'll say since you're, since like it's a close combat weapon, we'll say you're good. Just go ahead and take the shot. Okay. What's the worst that could happen? You can uh, aim also. I forgot we could aim. You can aim. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's... Jeremy, how Three. do you have stress? I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> I don't even know what that He's would have really come from. All right, so we're ignoring the yellow. And yeah, she could even push or anything. Uh, so you take... Uh, so you got one success then from the black die. What's the base damage? Three. Okay, so it takes three damage as the door that it just came through uh, is kind of partially plastered and it's fettuccine like blood um, and then we'll move over and it is Veronica's turn uh, I'm gonna see to um, Clover real quick since it looks like she's not doing too good Okay. All right. uh, Clover did you go you didn't go into like critical damage did you uh, so I have three total health, and I took two. Okay, yeah. So you should be okay still. Like you shouldn't have you shouldn't have to I'm roll for the physical. I'm looking her over. Okay. <laughs> it hurt. It's it's it stung a bit. All right. Um. So the android will go, and it will turn its attention to Marshall since Marshall just did so much damage to it, uh, and it will take a. That's a that's a pretty big swing. So it'll go ahead and, and I don't think I can oh, sorry. 
Uh, since you moved and shot, you didn't have a ability to defend at this point. Right. And, uh, and you don't have any armor, so two two damage. Over to you. And it'll stay there because it's a dumb android. Uh, not a smart android like Marshall. And uh, Clover. But I can I split a movement and like go in, hit it, and come back out? Uh, no, it's it's an action mm. then an action. So action I think I'll until stay. completion. Okay. I think I'll stay where I am. All right. Uh, we'll go back up to Big E. You're right next to it. Hey, over here, ragu <laughs> looking thing. I like it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and. Uh, try again for the uh, blunt instrument. Okay. Uh, and so you can see that kind of takes its head and its head's kind of falling a little bit off to the side. It's still barely hanging in there but it looks like between the shots that managed to catch it in the upper chest, you've you've smacked it now with this uh, with this wrench a couple times. Its head's a little bit off kilter. Marshall, you, uh, not Marshall, uh, uh, Captain McCall, you could finish it off if you wanted to try to figure out how to get in there. Sure. Okay. I will do that. I'm going to take aim this time. Sure. (laughs) Hey, Jen. Oh, my God. You want to push? Am I going to hit Eugene? Uh, If I don't? I, I. no, no, no. I'll say if if uh, if you would have come up uh, as a face hugger, yeah. But like if you push and he comes up as a face hugger, maybe maybe it, it's gonna wing somebody. <laughs> Do it. Yeah, let's push. Do it. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It, it is a laser. It could go right through uh, Eugene and into him. I don't know. Okay. Good oh, news. My. Good let's news. Rolls. Yep. Is it is it the bullet just takes just manages to catch the part of the head. That was like clinging to the side of the neck and just blows it clear off and it comes flopping to the ground. The bad news is that the bullet went right through Eugene's arm, a through and through in the process of doing so. Uh, go ahead and take a point of damage, uh, uh, Eugene, as he just flies through. Uh, but now the well, android has fallen. I would, like together, to, I would like to use my resilient skill. Okay. And that is uh, um, anytime I take damage, I. Uh, I can roll for strength to see if I reduce it. Good. Roll for strength. Ooh. I like it. Um, can't push it, but I can try. Flex mm-hmm. your muscle. <laughs> there you go. And you manage you manage to you you manage to like just kind of shrug it off. It was just sort of a, a flesh wound. It's no big deal. You look at it, just you thought it might have been a through and through, but it's really just a scrape along the side of the arm. Okay, so we're get, we're kind of past time here, so let's just close a few things down and we'll we'll pick up in a couple weeks so as you take out these two androids uh maybe one of you uh goes back out and goes back to the bridge kind of takes a look i i'm sorry they gotta go they have times that they have to you know go and stuff jen sorry um <laughs> but uh i know but like people have kids and work and such so i gotta be respectful so you go back to the bridge uh so whoever does to inspect the other one you take a look uh, first the console uh, and you can definitely tell that there's there's some sort of sabotage or some something going on here you can also see as you look that apparently the sensor station also saw something fairly similar the pilot the piloting station looks fine and you know some of the life support stuff looks fine too but then the big thing is is when you actually look out the forward viewer one of the f- small forward view portals uh, so you're looking kind of out the sort of the window over there uh, you know that immediately underneath, uh, about a deck or two below, I can't remember if it's one or two, that you have this ship is built with an umbilical, a docking umbilical, which means it has the ability to dock with various stations, has the ability to dock with other ships fairly easily. And when you look out the window, you can see that there is a ship that seems to have docked with yours. You can kind of look down and just see this fairly dark, blackish grayish metal of a ship connected to yours a few decks below and they uh, and you are most certainly not like moving at speed and we'll end there and we'll pick up in two weeks and see what kind of goes down two weeks two weeks too long 
Yeah, I know. But whew. okay, so there we go. Let me switch us back off of that so we can do our goodbye plugs and let me turn the music off. So uh all right. Um everyone's got stuff this week, so why don't we just like let's do that. Who's got stuff on Tuesday? No one got such on, no one's got such on Tuesday. Tuesday's like an uh, empty night. The agendas. Jen, you got yeah. stuff on Tuesday? What do you got? Borderlands two with That's some of the GP nice. people from the Radiator RPG group. Is that Pixel on Pixel Prowler channel? Oh yeah. All right. Uh, Wednesday, Jeremy's got stuff on Wednesday, right? Yeah, we're gonna have episode one of Spectacular. It should be good times. Okay, and that's gonna be on Defenders of Cobalt. Uh, mm -hmm. Anybody else has something on Wednesday? I do. We got Zweihander on Zweihander RPG at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. Okay, awesome. We have two options: Zweihander Spectacular on Wednesday. Uh, Thursday, Melissa and I got stuff. We'll be on the Zvihander channel, Zvihander RPG, as we're picking yep. up where we left off a couple weeks ago uh, with our game. Uh, Friday this week, uh, who's got Friday stuff? Friday. I have Alien on Thursday. Oh, that's right. That's Destroyer right. of Worlds, Destroyer of 9 p.m. Worlds. Central Standard Time on twitch.tv slash freeleaguepublishing. Uh, we're making our way through that, that module, and we found two of the four Marines, and okay. it's interesting yeah nice um i noticed that the one that turned was was different for them than us i think wasn't it yeah because i messed up the names when i ran the first oh, time did you? You guys. <laughs> and i had to just i had to run with it i'd stick with it because i committed oh, okay. on stream nice. right on uh okay uh, does anyone else have anything on thursday or friday uh my stuff is on our patreon yeah <laughs> um cool. so we release uh play sessions and development sessions on our patreon for those who uh back at the five dollar pledge level if you want to get insider info on the upcoming radiator rpg awesome awesome um uh, saturday early in the day uh so i think that's uh one central uh yep. melissa and i are playing with chuck and some of the defenders of cobalt on the free league publishing channel so free league publishing twitch show uh, we're playing Forbidden Lands. That should be our second our second play of that. Uh, and then later in the day, I hear that you all are going back to your alien game. That's nice. right. Yeah, so yeah we're back to Destroy of the Worlds again on Saturday <laughs> night at 8.30 Central Standard Time on Grim and Perilous Plays. Awesome. Uh, okay. And then I know on Sunday, I think this is what we use. So Sunday, this this coming Sunday should be a, uh, should be a Shadowrun Sunday. So myself, Chuck, uh, Bert, Frendon, Christopher from Two Old Guys Games, uh, we play intermittently through like Shadowrun, and we're playing through different systems. So you can come check that out. That's on Notorious DMG TV. Uh, and then um, next Monday, we won't be on here. Like Vessen, we we play Vessen, but we're playing it over on the Free League channel. So we're continuing our Vessen game. Uh, yep. Melissa and Jeremy are in that one, but we'll be on the Free League channel. Same time, just a different channel. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, anything else? Anything else? Plutecast. Plutecast. <laughs> Check out the Plutecast, please. There we go. You want to hear us talk about comic books. So Yeah. yeah. Tons of stuff. Tons of people doing awesome stuff. Lots of TTRPGs, video games, comics. Got, got everything. There's something every day <laughs> of the week for yeah. all this stuff. Yeah. Trying to find everyone's Twitch channel and... Yeah. All that stuff to try and drop some links. I think I'll try to do, be better prepared next week for everyone. Uh, and then yeah. I'll be dropping Two those weeks. for everyone. I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and add, because I, I have a couple folks, because I think I have, I think I, I have a couple. Yeah, I have Defenders. I think I've got the Plude, I think. GP. I do have Grim and Perilous. I got the Plude cast. So I'll add, I have to add to the Free League one, I think. And I'll add gens as well, so that we all, we yeah. all have like little messages that we can pop every now and then. All right, uh, all right, that's it then. Uh, so I guess let's figure out someone to raid, and then all that kind of good stuff, right? There's I that was... chat Chuck guy over on tabletop keyboard <laughs> you know right what? now, mm -hmm. Frenchy. Let's go tell him how we killed Frenchy. Let's yeah, yeah. Let's go show him. Like, oh, yeah. Chuck, we killed your character oh, for a session. Shame. Should all come up with a story that we all agree upon? And be like, yeah, there's totally yes, there yeah. The 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 Joe androids ate him. It was crazy. We don't know why, <laughs> why they started eating him, but uh, all that talk know. of pasta, man. All right. Mm. Yeah. All right. Man.
I, can't, I don't even know the last time I had Alfredo, but no. no. Oh man, it sounds so good right now. <laughs> I still, I still have weird memories of it. I like it, I can eat it, but I still think about that. I'm like, oh, Bishop, mm, you were mm. such a good android. Mm. <laughs> Ash, you were not a good android. Oh, <laughs> no. Uh, all right, so that's it for us. Thanks for those of you who hung out and watched. And if you're watching this later on VOD or on YouTube, appreciate you to take the time. Uh, we're going to raid TT2KP, so hang out with us for a second, and we'll move on over. Have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye.